Hi there, in this video, I'm going to show you five ways to create functions in JavaScript. So let's say you're new to JavaScript and you don't really quite grasp all the various ways we can create functions and why or when to choose which one. We're going to answer both of those questions in this video by showing you these five ways to create functions in JavaScript. Also, I'm going to show you real world code bases and the use cases for these different functions. So let's get into it. The first way to create functions in JavaScript is the good old function declaration or function statement okay so now this one is the one you would notice if you're coming to javascript from other languages but this is the syntax for creating a function declaration or a function statement or a function definition in javascript so all you have to do is put in the function keyword and then the name of your function so let's call this one say hello for example and um Put a name right then we could just say um let's just do console.log of course why not and some template string hello then we're gonna pass in name just like so right so this when we call this function now we call it like so it's just gonna do that so this is a function expression so just gonna call this just function and of course we did not pass in anything right so we have to pass in let's say kelvin because I said that was going to be undefined and we have a little Kelvin. So that's function, uh, that's function definition or function declaration. Okay. So one cool thing about this function is that you could actually, or uh, this way of creating a function in JavaScript is that you could use it before you define it because function declarations and function definition with this way are going to be hoisted. Okay. So now if we even do this, you know, see hello Kelvin. So that's just the way one of the properties of defining functions in this way. So a real world use case would be so um if we check the treble utils code base, you could see I have a function definition, even though so I'm just exporting it because I'm going to use it in another file, but it's the same thing as the one you've seen previously in that I'll let you just functions files. So here we just have the function keyword, of course, then the name of the function, right? And the uh, parenthesis for the parameters or the arguments you're going to pass in yeah i'm just you know giving it a default value right but it's still the same signature and everything and we're just returning this um the fields to max so don't worry about implementation but this is like a reward use case for a function definition i mostly use them if i know i have like a like maybe utilities function like this one like you could if we even check more of this uh if you check um get request duration you could also see the same thing so i really like them because i don't know it's it's just like like i said it's the good old traditional way of defining functions in javascript so if you want like a function like so it just really works so i use them a lot you can find them in all the code bases that i work in so way number two is function expression so in javascript functions are values right so that means you could pass them okay so one way we could actually show that is because javascript wants to give us a way to um point a function to a variable okay and this gives you this pattern of creating anonymous functions which means functions without a name mostly or functions that can be passed around so i'll give you an example so the same say hello function we could do we could create a say hello right um variable and now we could pass it a function. Let's do this. And we could say console.log. Then we could just say, you know, the same. Okay, let's let's give it the argument. Um probably just gonna so don't need so let's do this. The same thing we do hello and we're gonna do name, right? Like so. We're not returning anything. Right, so now we could call say hello, right? So even the editor is telling you that yo, this is a function. So this is called a function expression because you are passing it as a value to a variable called say hello. This could be anything really at this point. So we could even say hi, right? Like so. All we have to do is to match it. So this is you find this a lot, especially when you're dealing with callbacks. I'm going to show you a couple of them that's as littered around code code bases. So if you run this to see if everything is good, you could see, of course, again, I did not put. So you know what? I'm just going to, you know, just a side show you this way to have an, 
a default value. So this would work. And um, yeah, that works. So of course, if you're passing a new value, um, let's say, Miguel, I don't know why that came to my mind, but what, what not? So this would also work. All right, so let's see an example use case, like a real world code based usage for this. So I'm going to hope with, um, let's see, get users initial. So this is a, a, a helper in the, um, in the Mellow code base. Right, so this is this is a sales helper, right? But the the principle still applies, right? You could see, but you see this syntax. Um, one other thing I didn't mention, which I think I should really quickly, is we can actually have you know one other pattern you see for this sort of um way to make a function in JavaScript is to maybe like have an object. So uh, if I have an object, a person. Now we could now do something like hi. And now pass it the uh, function expression like so, right? So it's just going to be like so. Now is now a method, right? So this pattern you see most for like method. So anytime you see either like a, like an assignment to a variable or an assignment to a property which makes it a method, that is a function expression, right? So uh, that's why in this code base, in the one I'm about to show you, this get user initials, you can see we are we are pointing this fn property to this function expression or this anonymous function all right so you could see it just do the same thing as a function would do but now it's, it's passed to like a property of an object in this case or just like a variable in this case all right um another thing with function expression is you could also give them a name you don't always have to leave them anonymous so this is actually good especially for stack traces and stuff so we could just we could give it a separate name right and it 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 doesn't really matter in as much as you're assigning it to a variable so you, it looks more like a function definition so it's mostly like a function definition or declaration but something that is passed to like that is being um pointed to a variable so if you run this now it's still gonna work so it doesn't matter the name but this is mostly like for easy debugging and stuff like that okay so good so let's go forward so number three number three is the arrow function so to be uh, much more precise is the fat arrow function and this one was mostly um introduced to the language recently but for two reasons one for coins for more test or more easier function expression and for a function that doesn't have its own this context so every function have this and um, so with the fat arrow function, it doesn't really um, create its own this context. So it's really, really good for, for things like passing it to other um, callbacks or other functions. It's really good. So I'm going to show you an example, like even with this one, right? So let's, let's see, uh, um, so let's say I have, um, let's say numbers, I could do, um like so right so with an arrow function right so i i could do an arrow function like so let's say numbers dot map and now i can pass an arrow function which is going to take a number so if you know the map and so this is the signature of an arrow function num then now i could just do console.log num right like so okay this is really fun so if i run this you could see all the numbers so what's happening here so this is general signature for an arrow function so um this if there's like an argument in an arrow function you don't have to put the parenthesis but this is how an arrow function should look most of the time right and something so let's say let's take the simplest the same thing we're doing before so we could say cons hello right and we do like so and we can return something we could do console.log right um say hello i'm not going to just pass in anything so like this this works if we do hello and we could run this you could see hello it's there but uh one cool thing with arrow function which i said it was made for shorter functions um you could it's you could literally just do this so if you have only one statement in an arrow function you could do this but mind you this is actually returning whatever you put in here all right so but for this case it actually works so it's really terser 
but I, I find it sometimes more confusing especially when you do a lot of things like this I, I could do so let's say i could do something like this and i could um uh, do hello you know just like the way we had it before you can see how terse it is and like how concise it is if you like that um, most um team don't like you having arguments without the parentheses it's really a bit confusing but arrow functions allow that or fat arrow functions rather i rather that so arrow function fat arrow function the same thing you could do this as well so yeah if you, that's one of the um that's the way it is so let's let me show you a real world use case um i'm gonna open the Travel Express, I have some examples. Like I said, you could pass it to um a like a callback. So if you know when you do like document.add event listener, you could use an arrow function for the callback if you want it to be terse. Without an arrow function, this we need you to type in the function keyword and all that stuff. So you could see how it's being used here as a callback. And you could see we could also have the um the curly braces because we're not returning anything we just want to run something in here but it just makes it so for this use case it's mostly for just making the function expression really really shorter okay so next let's look at async function so async function is for asynchronous operation and mostly for the async await pattern and um so the way you do that is mostly just type async so you could do this for both function expression or function declaration so we could do async function like so and we could do get users for example right and we can now do so without that if you don't do async you can't use a wait so if you do this and if you try to like use this in javascript like you run if you run this now uh, let's say i don't know what should i do here uh, if, if we check this you see, I wait expressions are only allowed with async functions under the top level of modules, right? So yeah, so that's it. So it's the pattern where you so anytime you want to do something that will take a little bit of time or you're making a network request, you have mostly seen this in code bases like so. I'm gonna show you one in example. Uh like for example, so we could do this and now we could not do here wait, maybe fetch, you know, make your network request and all those kind of patterns. All right. So that just is just this async keyword and your weights. All right. So that's a, like async function, all right so um reward use case right let's check it out um uh, one i will show you is probably um let's see so still in trouble utils i guess no 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 let's look at uh, mellow view um i'm going to open an action like uh, login for example and if you see this is like an async function expression like I told you, you could use it for both the, def the uh, definition. So async functions can apply to functions declaration, function expression, and even arrow functions if you want. So you could see um, we have this. So this is like a sync function, and that's why I could use await here. All right. So this is one you reward use case for it. Okay. All right. So that's for async function. And lastly, we're going to look at ify or immediately invoked function expression now this one if you're a beginner you might find it a little bit confusing but i've seen this quite a lot in some code bases and i'm going to show you the general form of why so you do this so you know in most functions when you define them even if it's a function expression you have to call them later on in your code base right but with if it's or immediately invoked function expression you want to declare the function and use it immediately so it's a function expression that is both declared and run immediately so so this is the general form you know in parentheses in javascript when you use a parenthesis it means that you want to evaluate this code base so mostly it starts like this and you do a function and you define the function body right so this is your async function and of course this is how you call functions right so now if i do console.log um hi like so right so now if we run this you get to see hi so we are defining the function and we are calling it immediately so what this translates to is like something like this um so if i say const say hi for example like so right if i just say say hi and of course that's kind of defeats the purpose but i just want to split it so you understand what's going on so it's you defining the function expression yes and you're telling with this parenthesis, this first parenthesis, you're telling JavaScript to evaluate this 
and then you're calling it. So you're evaluating, you're getting the instance of the function, and then you're calling it. Okay. So this is how you do like an if you all right. So let me show you one real world use case if you're confused. Um, so I'm gonna show you this in the sales code page. I thought I had that up on. Okay, so um I'm gonna open sales now and I'm gonna go to sales console and you could see one if you use case so this use case is we're trying to get the sales app instance and you could see like like i told you you could also name your function expression so the same thing i told you which is the the first parenthesis which is going to wrap the function definition or the function expression and then you're going to do your logic and you return whatever you want to return so in this case we want the function the the instance of the sales app you could see we are returning here all right for this when we do this business you could also see um how we are returning the final sales app right the this we're, we're calling this constructor and then we are evaluating this ify so you always have this pattern where you want to run a a piece of function in place you like you're not defining to call it as well we just want to run that in place most times it's used because functions have their own scope you can use it to like encapsulate like a scope so you could just but in this case we just want to run a piece of logic a group of a group of logic in place and just return back the sales um, app instance all right so to recap let's quickly recap um so we had the function definition or you call it the function declaration or function statement which is almost as every other language have one of them so in javascript we do it with the function keyword standalone and we could say hello like so right I'm just going to give it like so then so this is the function statement declaration or definition then we have function expression all right function expressions uh so which is going to be let's say, say give it this the pattern is mostly like a variable or a property and then we could do a function say hello you could give it this or not it works it's an anonymous function either ways all right then we have arrow functions arrow or fat arrow functions and this just makes it more concise it makes the function expression more concise so we could not do this all right cool stuff then um, we also have the async function which applies to either of these three so um, let's just use the function declaration i use this a lot the function uh, okay so it's mostly for operations that are going to take a while and if you need a wait inside the function body so you could do that and lastly we have the ify or the immediately invoked function expression all right so this is the pattern with function c so you could it's, it's an expression anyways so you could not um do that to it you could not give it a name but you could you should always call it so this is this is the these are the five ways to define function i'm going to talk about of course there are other ones like um generator functions but this one's for a beginner to javascript if you know this really really well and you could see that the various um, ways and when to use them i i, I guarantee it's going to make you really better in writing functions in javascript so yeah that's it the five ways to create functions in javascript as a javascript newbie let me know what you think for each of these um ways and which one you've been using a lot and which one you are still confused about i hopefully this video helped answer most of the confusions you had um also if you like this video please give it a, a like right and also subscribe share it and um, let me know in the comment if, uh, what other javascript topics you want me to cover and also youtube is going to recommend a video for you to watch next please watch it because it really helps the channel grow thank you